my honour to present the Lifetime Achievement Award to Simon Sussman. I was uh, born in Tel Aviv, Israel. Uh, my father had fought in the War of Independence in the Palmach. Uh, there was a group of, I think, 804 South African volunteers and he was one of those. Stayed on after that and settled in Israel. Uh, my mother was from England and uh, she wanted to get home. So shortly after I was born, we went back to the United Kingdom. I think I was six weeks old. And within two years, my father, who was then working for Marks and Spencer, was dispatched to Cape Town to fix Woolies. And as early as I can remember, every Saturday, I uh, was going to stores with my father. And in fact, my first ever job was age nine, when they gave me a crowbar and allowed me to go into the receiving area of Woolworth Weinberg to open up packing cases. That was great fun and I think sealed my career from age nine. I started in Marks and Spencer in 1971. I started on the shop floor, worked in stores for about 18 months, and then moved into the headquarters. Now Marks and Spencer in the 70s was a business at the height of its powers. And I did various jobs in buying, uh, I nearly got fired for insubordination, which was quite fun, and ended up in the final year as the personal assistant to the chairman, who was the most unbelievable man, Lord Marcus C. But what really attracted me to come back to South Africa was the opportunity to build what I thought could be done, which was to build a unique food business in Woolworths. Uh, at the time they had food, but it was tiny. I think we did 84 million rands in the year that I came back. Today it's close to 30 billion rands. It's always difficult to look back and say what you're proud of. But I think I grew up in a family of very strong principles. Uh, my father was a man of integrity. He worked hard. Uh, he led this business. He led other organizations. So I inherited from him and from my mother and from our broader family a work ethic and a set of values and a principle that says do the right thing. Uh, I think I've tried to apply that all the time during my career and I suppose for me the way that that expresses itself best is I have four remarkable children. Woolies being a values-based company needs to behave in that way. And about 15 years ago, we started to look at these values and say, well, if we're going to apply our values, they need to apply to everything. In particular, how we do business and how we do business in the environment and the society around us. And that led us to the good business journey. So I do a lot of work with uh, NGOs, with charities. I chair the local branch of ORT. I sit on two or three of the community trusts here locally. Uh, I'm chairman of the Stellenbosch Business School. Uh, I work with a free black uh, university here on the Cape Flats. It does remarkable work taking kids out of the township and getting them to degree status. Uh, and many other things that I'm involved with. Simon Sussman is our chairman here at Autisa Cape. It's been an amazing experience working with him over the years in his calm, considered, measured way of dealing with problems. He's made a tremendous impact on our organisation and he gives real meaning to the Jewish concept of tzedakah through the way he gives of his time and his energy. Simon doesn't just talk, he mentors me, he mentors our students, he's there when you answer, he's there when you WhatsApp, he's there when you call, he's good. He's not there to tell you what you want to hear, he's there to give you what you need. Simon has been an instilling mentor for me. He has introduced me to his network and all the business people that he knows in his fold. And he also wrote a foreword for me for the UCT Business School Master's program that I was doing. I'm forever grateful for my association with him. He has been a very great help. I'm now in my late 60s in the privileged position of being able to look back on my life. Uh, I don't believe in wishing for change. I, I, I've been a happy and a lucky guy. I've had my share of ups and I've had my share of downs. I was brought up with this Jewish, deep Jewish value system, deep work ethic, and I think that stood me in very good stead. I try to pass that on to my children. This award is quite humbling for me. Uh, I, I've long held the view 
that the only people that can judge you are your peers. Uh, and in this case, it's my peers in the community that have chosen to honor me. So it's humbling, uh, it's much appreciated, and I'm going to try and live up to it if I possibly can. I have a great friend in India who retired at the same time as I did from running a retail business. And uh, I said to him, Nagesh, what are you going to do? You've retired now. So he says, Simon, the first third of my life I spent learning. The second third I spent earning. He says, and in this last third I'm going to do some returning. So I suppose that's where I am. I, I think I'm busy returning. I seem to be chairing a whole bunch of companies, NGOs, charities, uh, from Oort, Woolies, through to the University of Stellenbosch Business School. And indeed, I have no degree. So I said to them at uh, Stellies, what do you want an uneducated Jew to chair your board for you? They didn't answer, but they did appoint me. So anyway, I have to live with it. But when I look back, and I did mention some of these people, I think we are all hugely influenced by those that we see have bigger steps than we do. And I have many. It started, I suppose, with my parents. A father who fought in the War of Independence and was wounded. A mother who at 90 today is still as principled and clear about right and wrong as she ever was. A grandfather and grandmother indeed who came from Lithuania. Where's Howard? We also came from Lithuania. But my parents taught me very high standards, deep Jewish principles, values, uh, and I try and live to those today. As a young man, as a youth, I suppose, a teenager, my father had a fishing business. And from those fishermen, particularly a Muslim family who skippered the boats, I crewed and I learned. And I learned about patience and I learned about tolerance and understanding. And I learned about the long game from that family. It stood me in great stead through all my life. And in Marks and Spencer, as I mentioned, Lord Seif, Marcus, after whom I named my son. Marcus taught me about people and focusing on people and really listening to what people have to say and trying constantly to uncover their truths. I've tried to do that throughout my life. I had in England, too, a powerful grandmother, daughter of the founder of Marks and Spencer, and a woman of great passion, impeccable taste, and she taught me about that taste, and she taught me to respect and to honor the powerful woman. So we learn from our elders, but I also learn from my own children. I have four, from 34, Marcus, who's with me tonight, through to a daughter of 14. So I have four incredible children, as I said in that video, and you learn from each of them. I have the privilege of being in business with Marcus and watching him become a father. My little daughter, who was nine at the time, said to me one day, she ran into the long grass and she said, Daddy, run through this grass. Feel what it's like to be young again. And indeed, I did. So we learn from our children. We learn from our elders and our betters. I learned, too, from my mentorees. I'm in the position of mentoring a number of people. And I have, I only tell one story because it's a good story. And I tell it to my mentorees often. And that was at a 65th birthday party a few years ago. And old man Skulk Berger, who's the father of the rugby player, says, yeah, you people, he makes a speech, and he says, you people think my son is so brilliant on the rugby field, but on the farm, he's a nightmare. <laughs> so we all look at this great man talking about his great son. He says, yes, on the farm, he's full of ideas. And except for him, young skulk, 
Dit is nog een goede idee en nog een kak plan. <laughs> so what I try and teach my mentorees is ideas are cheap, plans are difficult. So make your plans well. And from them, my mentorees, I learned that a good plan and a good idea will be successful. And then from Woolies, I am chairman of Woolies. I've worked for it in, in a full-time sense for 35 years, but I packed my first packing cases in a Woolies packing shed in 1959. So that's quite a long time ago, before most people in this room were born. It's offered me so much. It's offered me lessons in leadership, in principle. A few people tonight have talked to me about the campaign that BDS waged against us. We just stuck to our principles. So Woolies has taught me about innovation. It's taught me about passion. It's taught me about setting yourself up against the best in the world, not the best locally. And it's taught me, as I said in that uh, film interview, that your peers are your only real judges. So I'm very grateful. I'm lucky. I'm lucky, too, to have a partner in Megan, who I've met late in life, and who's showing me new adventures. And I thank you, Megs, for that. But I thank all of you for this honor. I deeply appreciate it, and I will indeed try and live up to it. Thank you very much. Thank you.